Borrelia, or Lyme spirochetes, have been discovered in the myelin sheath of brain nerve cells. This is profound. This is by Dr. Alan McDonald, and it was published in 2007 in a study. The relevance of this is that for those of us that are diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, all of our treatments are based on suppressing or modifying our immune function, where it is speculated that our T cells and our B cells are attacking our nerves for no reason, like, like basically like our nerves are the enemy. And what this research is showing is that there, that Dr. Alan McDonald has found spirochetes, which are the bacteria that causes Lyme disease, in the myelin sheath of nerve cells. So obviously, if there's an infection present, and there could be other infections too, but for sure, if the Lyme spirochetes are in the myelin sheath, then could it be that our immune cells are just defending us? They are going after the enemy, which is an infection. Maybe that is why we are seeing inflammation of the nerves. Maybe these infections are on or really close to the nerves. And so we've talked about how our immune cells are our defenders, they're the soldiers, they're going after the enemy, and inflammation is the war. And if the inflammation is too close to the nerve cell, it all makes sense. So that's what we're going to be talking to about today. I'm going to head over to the slides. So if you like these types of educational videos, please like and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Live Disease Free. If we haven't met, my name is Pam Bartha, and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis over 30 years ago. And because I learned about these infections and I learned how to treat them, I have been able to live free of MS for over 30 years now, and I help others to do the same. So let's talk about this research. With multiple sclerosis, it is speculated that T and B cells attack the myelin sheath of neurons in the central nervous system, basically as if it were the enemy. And it's assumed that the immune system is not functioning properly, and therefore all of our current treatments for MS have been developed to suppress parts of our immune system. We know that the immune system protects us from different disease-causing microbes like parasites, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and others, and also the toxins that these microbes produce that are really toxic to our nerve cells. So if our immune cells are causing damage to our nerve cells, it would make sense to look for possible infections located on or near the inflamed nerve cells instead of just assuming that our immune cells have gone haywire. So there is a large and ever-growing body of research that supports the fact that MS is caused by dysbiosis. So we're really out of balance. We have too many disease-causing microbes and not enough health-promoting microbes. And that is what's causing our symptoms. So if that is true, if there's all this research, and I've been sharing lots of studies and they're coming out many studies per year, then why is this all being ignored by our standard of care, which is focusing on the disease-modifying drugs, which are really suppressing our immune system, and it's just trying to manage symptoms, so we have to live with the disease. Instead of looking for the pathogens, the microbes that are causing the disease, so that we can actually get our health and our life back. So we're gonna start off by reviewing the link between MS and Lyme disease. So later, if you wanna to go to our website, livediseasefree.com, you're gonna find a list of MS spirochete references that are dating back to 1909, 1911, and they're published in many different prestigious journals such as The Lancet. So from 1909 to the 1950s, many researchers considered MS to be caused by a spirochete, and that is a bacteria, a type of bacteria that looks like a corkscrew. Because of its similarity to between MS and other diseases that are caused by the same types of corkscrew type spirochete bacteria. So again, you can go to livediseasefree.com after and you can go through these studies yourself. I'm just going to share a few of the studies that we have on our website here so you can see the relevance. So the first study, 1917, 
spirochetes, the cause of MS, 1918, simmering spirochetes in MS by dark field microscopy in 1922, MS spirochetes in animal model, 1922, spirochetes in the cerebral spinal fluid of MS patients, 1928, spirochetes in the human brain of MS patients, 1932, the question of silver cells as proof of the spirochetal uh, theory of disseminated sclerosis, 1933, spirochetes in the cerebral spinal fluid of MS patients, 1939, spirochete-like formations in multiple sclerosis or in MS. 1948, spirochetes within the ventricle fluid of monkeys inoculated from human MS. 1952, acute plaques in MS and the pathogenic role of spirochetes as the etiological factor. And in the 1950s, the researcher Steiner found spirochetes in the brain lesions of autopsied MS patients. So this is just a small sample of the studies that were done from 1909 up to the 1950s. And then in 1957, Time magazine reported that a Philadelphia bacteriologist successfully cultured a spirochete microbe that she found in the spinal fluid of MS patients. She believed that multiple sclerosis was caused by the spirochete and that early treatment would lead to a cure or alleviation of the disease. So this is in Time magazine in 1957. And then she went on to share that uh, in 1957, reported that six years previously, she had devised a culture medium to grow these spirochetes from MS cerebral spinal fluid, but modifications to this culture resulted in a heavy growth of spirochetes in a few days. So in the early days, the scientists were having a hard time growing the spirochetes. Like they had to grow, they had to produce some kind of a medium like food to make these spirochetes replicate and they didn't know what they needed. And so this doc, this uh, bacteriologist discovered a really good growing medium and she was able to grow them really well. And then she reported that 59 of the 76 cases, so 78% were had positive cultures. Whereas, so th that's in the people that had MS. So when she took the spinal fluid of MS patients and then she could grow them, the gr try to grow the spirochetes on this good medium that she grew, that she discovered or created, she found that 78% had positive cultures for this spirochete. Whereas when you look at she looked at the controls, so people that didn't have MS and she took their spinal fluid, 100% of those people did not have the spirochete. They did not, it, the spirochetes didn't grow in the medium. So the organism is a spiral organism. It was similar in appearance to what the other researcher found, Steiner found previously. So again, you can look at these studies on our website, livediseasefree.com later. You'll also find more current studies and you can just go through them. And there are many other studies. You can do your own research. You can go to PubMed and you can look for articles. And I know science can be confusing, but sometimes even if you just type in multiple sclerosis and Lyme disease or multiple sclerosis and Borrelia, you can find different studies and just look at the abstract or the conclusion to kind of get a sense of what they are talking about. So Dr. Alan McDonald, we, I wanted to also share this because this is giving some background information because you wonder like, how are we getting the, the Lyme infection in our central nervous system, in our spinal fluid? This is one way. Dr. Alan McDonald discovered, and he looked at 10 people that died of multiple, he, they died. They had MS and he was able to examine their their brain and spinal fluid because they were specimens saved in brain banks. So these are confirmed cases of MS. And in 10 out of 10 cases, he found many, many small roundworms in, especially in the spinal fluid, also in the brain, but especially in the spinal fluid. And so this is a diagram from his work and the red arrows point to one worm and the blue arrows are pointing to another worm. 
And you may be wondering what all that green dye, the lit up color is from, but that is the green dye is attracted to the genetic material of the bacteria that causes Lyme disease, Borrelia, the corkscrew spirochete. So this, these two worms have a lot of Borrelia in them. And that's why the dye is attracted and that's how they can identify. So it's very, very specific to the specific DNA of Borrelia. This is one way that if we do have these worms, and that was 10 out of 10 patient, uh, MS patients that he tested, they had these worms, that they do carry Borrelia. They carry other infections also. So the next slide is just really discussing what Borrelia is. It is a, it's a bacteria and it is a spirochete or spirochetal bacteria. So it looks like a corkscrew and it is in the same family as syphilis. And we're going to talk about why that's important. So they are both spirochetes. So they're kind of related. They're family members. They're related. And Lyme expert, Dr. Klinghard, he has reported that at least 90% of his patients that he works with that have MS, they test positive for Lyme disease. So again, at least 90% of the patients, his MS patients, test positive for the bacteria Borrelia that causes Lyme disease, and that's the spirochete bacteria. So looking at syphilis, when a person, yeah, that's a sexually transmitted disease, but it is the same type of bacteria in the same family as Borrelia, the spirochete that causes MS, that causes Lyme disease. And so the syphilis bacteria has three different stages in people. If they're not treated well properly, it starts off with the primary where they get certain symptoms and then secondary and tertiary. And we're just going to focus on the tertiary stage. So if it hasn't been treated properly and somebody's had syphilis for years, how does that impact the body? So when the spirochete that causes syphilis enters the central nervous system of people, these are some of the symptoms that they can experience. And so this is if they've had it for a few years severe headaches, muscle weakness, and trouble with muscle movements, spasticity, trouble focusing, con uh, confusion, dementia, problems with memory and thinking and decision-making, changes in vision, blindness, hearing loss, tinnitus, dizziness, vertigo, paralysis. Do those symptoms sound like MS symptoms? A lot of them do. This is taken from the National MS Society website. Lyme disease can cause delayed neurological symptoms similar to those seen in multiple sclerosis, such as weakness, blurred vision caused by optic neuritis, sensations of itching, burning, stabbing pain, or pins and needles, confusion, and cognitive dysfunction and fatigue. Lyme disease symptoms may also have a relapsing remitting course. In addition, Lyme disease occasionally produces other abnormalities that are similar to those seen in MS, including positive findings on MRI scans of the brain and analysis of cerebral spinal fluid. These similarities in symptoms and test results have led some people with MS to seek testing for the presence of antibodies to Borrelia to determine if their neurological symptoms are the result of Lyme disease or truly MS. The distinction is important because Lyme disease, especially when treated early, often responds to antibiotic therapy, whereas MS does not. I find this really, really fascinating. So they're basically saying that whether you have Lyme disease or MS, you can have very similar symptoms. Whether you have Lyme disease or MS, you can have very similar findings on your MRI, but also if you had lumbar puncture done. And whether you have Lyme disease or MS, you could have antibodies present. The only reason that Lyme disease would not be causing MS is because if you have MS and you go on antibiotics, it doesn't really help. My response to that, many people do not successfully recover from Lyme disease using antibiotics. And many people have been using antibiotics for years and they have not successfully cleared Lyme. So maybe some people that catch it really early 
that right after their first exposure to Borrelia that are treated properly are recovering from Lyme disease. But many, many people, they don't even know that they got Lyme disease, that they were even bitten by a tick. The bullseye rash is very often a consequence of second or third or multiple exposures to Borrelia, according to Dr. Klinghard. This was taken from the Mayo Clinic website. So see your doctor even if symptoms disappear. Visit your doctor even if the signs or symptoms disappear. The absence of symptoms doesn't mean the disease is gone. Untreated Lyme disease can spread to other parts of the body for several months to years after infection, causing arthritis and nervous system problems. So this is not just for MS, but for anyone who is dealing with some type of disease that where you have neurological symptoms like ALS, PLS, Parkinson's, MS, there could be a potential of vector-borne infections that are causing some of your symptoms. So here are the pictures that you have been waiting for. Lyme spirochetes in the myelin sheath of brain nerve cells. The study from Dr. Alan McDonald, the title of it is at the bottom of this slide, and so you can look for it later. But you'll notice in these two images that there is a yellow center that is the axon of the nerve. So this is the, the nerve fiber. So this is a cross section. And then the orange around it is the myelin sheath. And then you'll see that on the left-hand side, there are fragments, so pieces of the Borrelia bacteria. Again, the fluorescent green dye is attracted to the genetic material of Borrelia, which is the corkscrew bacteria that causes Lyme disease. And you'll notice that on the right-hand side, there is a full spirochete, Borrelia spirochete. Again, the yellow is the center of the nerve, the axon, the myelin sheath around it, and then it's a little bit more orange. And then you can see the green spirochete. In both the images, the spirochetes are embedded in the myelin sheath of the brain nerve cell. This is just huge. So what this means is that our immune system is intelligent. If there, there could be other infections also. There could be fungus, there could be other bacteria, there could be other different types of small protists. But this is what would make common sense is that when there are different infectious agents that are close to or in the myelin sheath, they're in or close to the nerve cell, then our immune system is defending us and this will cause inflammation, this will cause damage, injury to the nerve cells. And so what we need to do is we need to focus on what are the infections? Is it always Borrelia? There's a pretty strong case that Borrelia is definitely involved very, very often. So we've seen that through what I've shared today. Really huge finding. What I encourage you to do is please share this with your functional medicine doctor, with your chiropractor, with your nurse practitioner, with your GP, with your neurologist, with MS groups. We have to have different conversations. We have to start talking about this. This is the answer. This is how people are recovering. If we were exposed to Lyme and we've had it in our body for years and it's moved into different organs and into our central nervous system, it does not just stay as a spirochete. And I'll be talking more on different videos about that. So for example, if we do get Lyme disease, what Dr. Klinghardt and a lot of other doctors believe because they're finding the cysts, and this is true for microorganisms, is that if they feel threatened, they turn into forms that are dormant, that are resistant to the treatment, and that would be the cyst form. The cyst form is very difficult to treat. And so with a cyst form, hard to treat, but our immune system still sees it there. And so it is definitely aggravating our immune system. We can still have immune response. And then the damage is from our immune system fighting it and not being able not being able to overcome these infections so this is really really huge and profound and i hope that you guys help me get the word out so please like and share this video and what i'd like to do is we have a newsletter and i've been 
we're putting this information on our website. So I'm putting the videos and the write up so you can share that with your practitioner. But what I would like you to do also is that if you would like the slides, because I thought that would be handy, I'm going to put links so that you can go to different websites and see what I'm sharing. I'm going to take the slides and I'm going to share those in my newsletter. So all you have to do is if you want access to the newsletter, then you just have to go to our website, livediseasefree.com and just opt in or listen to my masterclass training, learn more about these infections. As long as we have your email address and your name, then we can communicate with you. We can share this incredible information because this is truly the direction we have to go to recover from MS and other neurological diseases. So, and if you're at the place where like, Pam, this is so fascinating. I can't believe this. I've never met you before. This is the first time. Then watch my videos. I've got a playlist on YouTube, Live Disease Free. We also have like, so you can start changing your diet. So there's a playlist on the diet. You can start having symptom improvements. But when you're at that place where you really get it and you're just like, I'm done with these infections. I want to recover. I want a game plan. I want support. That's what we can help you to do. Just watch my masterclass training. There will be a link for this in the description of this video. You can watch my masterclass training. You can get started on a game plan. And I just wanted to share there is one wellness champion that is in our group right now that just shared this past week, really huge. She has not been able to move her hand. It's been clenched. And just from following the diet, she has posted a picture and I believe it might be in, I'm not sure if it is in our closed Facebook group for the students or if it's in the Live Disease Free community. You can go check Live Disease Free community but it's a picture of her where her hand has opened up. So there is so much hope for those of us that have MS. Maybe we haven't been able to use a hand or our foot has been locked with drop foot or we've been in a wheelchair or using a scooter or there are so many people that are recovering. I can't promise full recovery, but there is so much more recovery that we can have than we thought possible when we treat these infections we allow this inflammation to go away because our immune system doesn't have to fight anymore. So there is still so much that is still in the inflammation stage and that can be corrected. And that is super exciting. So get to know us, watch my videos, start to learn this process, start to learn the disease free, the live disease free process. When you're ready, if you'd like support, reach out to us. We'd love to support you and help you so that you can get back to doing the things you love to do. Take care and bye-bye for now.